I, I'll give you mine, which was um, we moved. We were in this uh, on Fort, we lived on Fort Myer when I was chairman. We had a wonderful house. It sits on top of a hill. You know, the army likes the high ground for you army guys. You, know, you like to be on the high ground. We had the high ground, <laughs> and you look down across a parade field to the Potomac River, to Memorial Bridge, to Lincoln Memorial, to the Washington Monument, all the way to the Capitol. I mean, it's the most spectacular residential view in all of Washington, D.C. But when you're out of office, you leave your house, and um, unlike, well, and you leave your house, and you, we moved into a little townhouse. By the way, the, the house the Army gives you on Fort Myer is a big, it's a kludge of a couple of houses, a couple of uh, a duplex, and they made it one big house out of it and a big dining room on the end. And so you have a lot of stuff. You had, I think, one, two, three, we had four floors. So there's a lot of stuff you don't even know what you got. And the moving truck comes, and they pile it in there. And you get to your townhouse, which is now not what the government can afford for you, but what you can afford for yourself, which is generally smaller, like about a third the size. And so you're trying to stuff things in there. And so I, the first couple of months of retirement, I'm spent trying to sort out, you know, what do you give to the thrift shop on base? What do you give to Goodwill? And so this is my Goodwill story. I got this uh, old Chevy Tahoe. I was stuffing stuff in the back of it. I go over to the Goodwill store there in Arlington. It's a big, big complex. And I drive in, and I can see the trailers where you drop things off. But I was uh, stymied by a Goodwill truck that was blocking the way. So it was a beautiful day. It was uh, October or whatever. I roll the window down and say, excuse me, sir, to the truck driver. Um, if you just back up a few feet, I'll go over there and deposit these things in those, by those trailers. And he says, you're going the wrong way. And I'm thinking, what's he talking about? And I look behind me, and sure enough, on the blacktop there, there was a faded, in my defense, a faded <laughs> arrow that was pointing the other direction. So I'd come in, counter flow to everybody else. But there were only two of us in this huge parking lot. There wasn't another car in sight, and just the two of us. And I, so I said one more time, I said, okay, you got me. I came in the wrong way. Really sorry about that. But if you just back up two feet, and it's all I'll just get by you. And he said one more time, you're going the wrong way. And uh, I said, well, he's been well trained by somebody. I said, okay. <laughs> so then we commenced to have a little discussion. It really was a discussion, you know, about I'm really sorry about this, but could you just... And then I, he eventually relents. He was not happy, but he, he backed up two feet. A very unhappy fellow. I said, thank you very much. Went over, did my thing. And on the way home, I'm thinking, you know, I've been out less than 30 days, and it was about noon. I said, where would I be noon a month ago or a month before that? Well, I might be having a meeting with the Joint Chiefs. I might be meeting with the President, meeting with the Secretary of Defense, you know, doing really important work. And, <laughs> and here... I just spent all my, all the tact and diplomacy I'd ever learned just to get this guy to back up two feet. <laughs> so that was, that's sort of my comeuppance where they, he didn't know who I was, didn't care, and, and by the way, shouldn't have. I mean, that's, he shouldn't have. So that was my comeuppance.